Welcome, boys and girls, to Storytime with Preacher Leon. It's so good to see each of you here. Uh, Miss Cindy and I, uh, it's such a beautiful spring-like day here in February. We decided to come uh, to the river, and um, I wanted to read and share with you uh, a story, if I may, at this time. I hope you can see and maybe even hear the river waters uh, uh, here behind me, or at least you can enjoy seeing. Uh, we can see that there's no leaves on the trees yet, uh, but they will be coming real soon if, if the warm weather continues like it is. So I hope, boys and girls, that you've had a great week. Uh, if you go to school, I hope that you had a great week at school. Uh, and if you were just home, that's good too. So I wanted to share with you about uh, Joseph. Now Joseph, uh, uh, he had a lot of brothers, and uh, here Joseph now, uh, we're going to see about a very special coat that was made for him. Uh, and you've heard this story, I'm sure, before. I want, you, I want to tell you this, if, if we could. And if you wanted to read this story, you can find this in Genesis, the 37th chapter, verses 1 to 4. So let me share this with you, boys and girls, if I may. So Jacob settled again in the land of Canaan, where his father had lived as a foreigner. This is the account of Jacob and his family. When Joseph was 17 years old, Joseph would tend his father's flocks. And this is flocks of sheep that he would tend. And Joseph was a teenager at the time. So he worked for his half-brothers, the sons of his father's wives. But Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things that his brothers were doing. So Joseph was telling uh, uh, on what his brothers were doing at the time. That wasn't very good. So Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph. It was a beautiful coat, or maybe you might call it a robe, but his brothers, they really disliked Joseph because their father uh, had seemingly to them had paid a little bit more attention to Joseph than what they had to, to them. And they were jealous of what uh, uh, his father had done for them. So uh, they couldn't say a kind word about Joseph. So they were really were just uh, really had some very difficult conversations there within the home. And uh, I wanted to continue on just a little bit. And we're gonna continue if you if you're, want to find this in the Bible. It's in chapter 37, verse 23 to 36. And we're going to see the brothers, they were angry because Joseph had gotten something they thought they didn't get anything, and that was the coat uh, of many colors. So listen to what Joseph's brothers now, as they were conspiring of what to do with young Joseph. Uh, and uh, so let's listen to this story, too, as we continue reading. So when Joseph arrived, his brothers ripped off the beautiful robe or coat that he was wearing. So they tore it and took it from Joseph. Then they grabbed him and they threw him into a pit. So there was no water there uh, in it. Then they just as they were sitting down to eat, they looked up and they saw a caravan of camels coming in the distance toward them. Now, when you'd see camels that'd be coming towards you, that would indicate to the older brothers of Joseph that there was some people that were bringing uh, maybe some gifts uh, and some items to sell or to trade uh, there in the next city. And there were travelers that were there. Uh, so this was their business and their way of making a living for their families so they could see that uh, uh, that caravan coming. So let's listen to what they did. So J Judah, one of uh, Joseph's brothers, said, uh, said to, to the others, instead of, of hurting Joseph, let's sell him to these traders that are coming in the distance. After all, 
He is our brother. He is our own flesh and blood. And so his brothers thought for a little while. And they all agreed, yes. So when the caravan got closer and closer, and they came by, Joseph's brothers pulled him out of the pit. And they sold him to them. And here's what, how much they got for Joseph. 20 pieces of silver. Wasn't that pretty? That, that was pretty bad, wasn't it? That, that his brothers would sell him. And that's what they did. And the traders, they took him to Egypt. Sometime later, Reuben returned to get Joseph out of the pit because Reuben wasn't there and he did not know exactly what had happened. This was another one of his brothers. But when he discovered that Joseph was not there, uh, he tore his clothes in grief because he was so sad and because he really didn't mean for Joseph to to be hurt or to to uh, be sold, let alone be sold in, uh, there uh, and to be carried off to Egypt. So he went back to his brothers and he was crying and he said, our brother's gone. What can we do now? Meanwhile, the traders arrived in Egypt where they they too once again uh, sold Joseph to Potiphar. He was an officer to the king or to the pharaoh of Egypt. So Potiphar was captain of the palace guard. And so this is where we're going to leave Joseph for it this time because his brothers threw him in a pit. They tore his coat of many colors that his uh, dad had, had uh, made for him. And they left him there. And Reuben would come back to get him and to discover that he was not uh, there uh, anymore. And he was so concerned. And then the other brothers confessed that this is what they had done. And uh, Reuben was very sad about what had happened. But God had his hand upon young Joseph. That's just like today, boys and girls. God has his hand upon each of us. He's got his hand upon your mom and dad and your grandpa and grandma and, and everyone and even you, boys and girls. He loves you. And uh, God had a plan. Uh, what seems so terrible on the, uh, uh, on the outside, God was starting to do a mighty work in the life of young Joseph, who was around, he was a teenager, probably 16 or 17 years old. And uh, now he found himself in Pharaoh's house in Egypt. And uh, we're going to see later on what God is able to do in young Joseph's life. Boys and girls, I hope you have a great uh, day, a, a good remainder of the afternoon. And just enjoy yourself as we have this pretty spring-like weather uh, that is coming. And spring is just around the corner. Bow with me, if you would, boys and girls. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day and the blessings you've granted to us. Once again, the privilege that we have of being together. And Father, I thank you for this beautiful setting that we have here of being able to look out and to see uh, in the midst of winter. And we see all these trees that are barren right now, have no leaves. But yet, Father, I know that you've got a plan. And that plan is for the weather to change, to get warmer and warmer and to stay warm and you're going to order these trees to start sprouting new leaves and new growth and all the animals that have hibernated uh, they're going to uh, just come back to life and once again this forest and uh, and this area here is just going to be filled with life father thank you for that Thank you for every boy and girl that's listening and every family. Bless them, Father. Take care of them. Keep them safe until we are going to meet again uh, in your house. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful week, boys and girls.